What did he need to do that he wasn't doing? All of that, all of the time, he was looking for what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? Why am I this happening like this? Why am I that happening like that? Why this person did this? Why, why, why? When he could have been at peace. He could have been hanging out with God. He could have been allowing God to give him what he needed at the next level that he was going to. It's, it's, it's a big deal how we go through that fire. Now, we, we talked about some folk in the Bible and one of them was Moses. He had his burning bush. But see, when the burning bush came up, y'all, Moses was scared. He was afraid to do the very thing that he had been created to do. Because the Bible says that <clears throat> Moses talked to God face to face. That's what he said. So he, he talked to God face to face. But when he first saw that bush burning, the Bible said he was scared to look at God. And then he had other stuff he was scared about. He was scared that Pharaoh wasn't going to do what God told him to do. He was scared that the people wasn't going to believe that God sent him. He was scared because he felt like he had a speech impediment. He couldn't talk right. Well, how many of you know that you, you ain't got nothing going on that God can't handle? It don't matter. Whatever it is, God can handle it. And so, we can't be afraid of the fire. That's the first thing that gets us in trouble. I, uh, prophet is prophet. Prayed for me last night. And she said, Well, you're not going to need that oxygen machine anymore. And uh, <laughs> the Lord had to talk to me and tell me, You just need to slow down. And you just need to not panic. And you just need to give yourself time to breathe. And so that's what I've been doing. Amen. And then that's why I'm sitting up here tonight before y'all. And I ain't got that machine. Amen. <laughs> but all of that was part of my fire. Okay. All of that was part of my fire. But at Moses, Moses came to that burning bush one way, and after he had that conversation with God, let me tell you, God changes your want to. After he had that conversation with God, he left that burning bush and he walked straight into his destiny. And he never looked back. Now, I'm not saying he didn't have some along the way, but after he finished having that conversation with the Lord, he walked straight into his destiny. And what I want to know is how many people I got up in here tonight who are ready to move straight into your destiny. I, I want to see your hands. Are you ready? Think about it now. You know how we be up in church and we be praising God? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the folk in front of you on the side, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you doing it too, uh-uh. Uh this ain't that kind of question. Are you ready? Because see, when I tell you that God going to bring you out of what you in, are you ready to give it up? Are you ready to give it up? And if I tell you that God is going to bring you in to a new place that you don't know nothing about, are you ready to learn? Are you ready to stop being set in your ways and become a strong new wine skin so God can put some new wine in you? Ain't going to look like what you used to. Okay, I'm going to ask you again. Are you ready? To walk straight into your destiny. 
Raise your hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because see, our next set of folk, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not afraid. They were not afraid. They knew that the Lord was going to show up. They, they didn't have no hesitation of walking into the same fiery furnace that the folk who put them in, they died. The folk who just got close to it, they died. They walked right up in there. Now that's what you call not being afraid of the fire. Okay? They were sure that God was going to show up. But the thing of it is, they were willing to die. They told that king, when he said, you mean to tell me y'all gonna bow down uh, to that my statue over there? Y'all gonna bow down? They said, mm, we ain't even gonna defend ourselves. <laughs> we gonna wait for God to show up. All right. And if he don't show up, we still ain't gonna bow down to you. Now that's what they said. They were not afraid. And we got to have some holy boldness. So when I tell you, you got to stop the thing that you do. Don't raise your hand to tell that. But what I, what Prophet said, look, don't, not if you ain't ready. Amen. That's it. Don't don't raise your hand. Don't come nowhere near me. <laughs> because you will find yourself coming out of there. All right. All right. You sat up in church and you was trying to be cute and you said you was ready, uh-huh. Yeah. You done seen prophets and apostles before, uh-huh. But it, it, it will happen. So you need to search your heart. Search your heart right there sitting in your chairs while, while I'm taking this nice little leisurely walk with you. Search your hearts and make sure you are ready to come out. Man. Make sure you ready to give up the things that you do that you know you ain't got no business doing. Amen. Are you sure yeah. that you are ready to give up that thing that is standing between you and your destiny and really standing between you and your God yeah. only because you left it Amen. and let it be that way. Don't be afraid to die. Yeah. Because all you're going to do is die to the person that you used to be. Even to die off this earth. How God going to use you? How God going to bring you out of one thing and take you into another thing, but you getting rid of like die, die? No. Die to who you used to be. Amen. So the new person that you are, the person that God created you to be, can be birthed. Amen. That you can go on and deliver that baby. Yes. Uh huh. Amen. And it's not going to be no hard labor pain. Amen. See, the real work of the thing, hard labor, is on the inside. Amen. It's in the spirit realm. Glory to God. On the inside. And you can have an easy birth or you can have a hard birth. But that's going to be up to you. But once it gets started, it ain't going to stop until right. it's finished. So stop being afraid to die. Go on and die. And, 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 and here's what it looked like. Okay, well if I don't smoke cigarettes, what am I going to do when I'm scared? And what am I going to do when I get nervous? And what am I going to do when I don't feel like eating? And what am I going to do when I, you know, when I'm standing out there with other folks and they smoke cigarettes? Can't, you can't be afraid. What about, well, if I don't have sex with him, what am I do when he leave me for somebody who will? <laughs> See, we taking a nice little walk. Taking a nice little walk. What people going to think I'm be a minister without a husband? What's, what they going to think of me? Who going to help me pay these bills if I don't keep this man? Huh? 
I'm going to get to sleep at night. <laughs> and Lord, what you mean? Don't go get my child out of jail. What you talking about? Okay. Y'all were, were able to connect with the fire. Y'all y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. But you can't be afraid of fire, number one. Other, another thing about not being afraid of the fire, do not be afraid to be great. Ain't nothing wrong with where we are right now. The Lord said despise not small beginnings. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with this. It's awesome to me. I'd much rather have it than any member truth. I'm trying to figure out, it seems like it'll wear them out to walk from the parking lot to the door. You got 30,000 folks in, in, in one building. And, and then they, you know, I'm like, they have to have ballet service for me. <laughs> but seriously, you can't be afraid to be great. And a lot of us are. A lot of us are. Well, I can't give him up. Lord, you telling me I got to give him up in order to go up there? And I got to stop being all up in my cheering business? Come on, Lord. Come on, God. Stop being afraid to, to be great. You know, let me tell you what it looked like. You don't give your all. You just do enough for government work. <laughs> Y'all remember that, that saying people used to have? They used to have a saying they'd be like, they do a thing and they wouldn't do it 100% or they wouldn't do it the very best that they could do it. But they say, it's good enough for government work. What they meant was, if you was working for the city, the state, the feds, any level of government, they had these guidelines. They had these, you know, that you had to follow. Minimum this and minimum that and all of that. You had to follow, follow them guidelines. So they could have given more and they could have done a better job but the standards were set down here. So they didn't, they didn't want to give no more than what the standard called for. But in order to be great, you got to do more than what the standard calls for. And I can tell you of a surety that it is a lot of people, not just black women, but especially black women, because that's what this conference is about. We do not allow ourselves to be great because then we might have to leave pooking them. We know they can't go. And so since we know they can't go, we don't do nothing that will take us out of that circle. That's right. Uh, and we've gotten comfortable. Yes. And we don't want to step outside our comfort zone yeah. and go make a connection. Mm -hmm. Go ask somebody for something. Go learn something new. Mm -hmm. Go do something different. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we doing things just cause that's what the other people are doing. Mm -hmm. We don't even really want to do it. But we just doing it because they doing it. Well, we could be doing something greater. So that's what I'm talking about when I say, don't be afraid to be great. I have to challenge myself. Is this the best I can do? I like excellence. I don't want to be mediocre. You know, I, I, I hadn't been necessarily wanting to be great. God said, well, yeah, but you ain't supposed to be scared. All right. I said, okay. <laughs> Let's work on this, Lord. 
What's it going to take? That's what you have to ask God. What's it going to take? But even better than that, make a decision. Make a commitment to yourself that if I put my hand to it, it's going to be the best that I can do. I'm going to ask God and receive from God grace. His enablements, his, his favor. So that I can labor in excellence. So that when I stand before him, he says, well done. My good and faithful servant. And I figure the only way to hear back from God is always to do the very best that I can do. You see, this ain't no dress rehearsal we in. This is the real deal. This is our life. Yes, yes. And either you're going to give your best or you're not. Right. Either you're going to be great or you're not. Yeah. Either you're going to accomplish and fulfill what God created you to do yes. and purposed you to do or you are not. Amen. So you have to decide. Right. Yes. And who's your commitment going to be to? Mm. Is it going to be to the God to yourself and the God who created you? Yes. Or is it going to be to the chickens you're hanging around with? Oh All right. All right. <laughs> Number two, you got to make a decision. Number two, don't be ashamed of the fire. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they were ashamed. They not only were they not afraid, they were not ashamed. They said, uh, we ain't gonna answer you. We ain't gonna answer you. Right. We gonna let our God do because we know He's gonna show up. That's right. it. That's it. So they they weren't afraid or ashamed. Mm. They went right on up in there, see, but they had a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They ate different food. Yes. They had a different regimen. Mm -hmm. You know when they prayed, they went and talked to their God. So many times a day. Yes, yes. They had a routine that hooked them up and kept them hooked up on the main line yes. with God. Mm -hmm. So they wasn't scared and they wasn't ashamed. That's right. You got to not be ashamed of being different. Amen. See, that's why you sitting down now drinking that beer that you don't even really want. Because you're trying to act like the rest of the folks. But if you need to take a bottle of water up in there, go and take your bottle of water up in there. And while they drinking their beer, you drink your water. That's it, And you can still hang out with them. But you got to be who you are. You got to be who God called you to be. You got to have, you got your own destiny. And you got to see to your destiny. Yeah. Just like Pastor said and, and Pastor said, this ain't about churching no more. This is about kingdom building. Y'all yeah. know what I figured, what what, what, what I, I, I I understand from the Lord. I, I really like this church, Pastor. I really do. Amen. It's, 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 it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I figured out that for folk like us, the church building is only a parking place. That's all it is. It's a place where we can bring all our stuff and set it up like we want to set up. And when we get ready, when we've got finished with us at that particular time, we're just going out done going home, leave all our stuff there. It's a parking space. That's, that's, that's what it is. So we ain't got to load up our stuff and carry it with us. And then break it down. Oh, mm. It's a parking space. Mm. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's a place for us to gather in. Mm -hmm. You know, but it ain't like it used to be, y'all. With the focus on the church. <laughs> Truly the focus is on the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The focus is on kingdom building. Mm -hmm. Well, I did take some work. I'm going to tell y'all something. <laughs> No matter if you think you called or if you think you are chosen, 
God had a particular thing in mind when he allowed you to be created. You were first inside him, in his very heart. And he said, humanity needs such and such. I'm going to create Apostle White. Okay? Because he was first. We were first in his heart. So, if he had need of you, then how come you think that you ain't got to do what he created you to do? What, what makes you think that you can just work, have a nice bank account, have a nice car, nice house, send your kids to college, Right. Just kick back and keep up with the Joseph. What really makes you think that that is what life is all about? That is not what life is all about. Life is, a, at this point in time, we really are living during the end time. And what this is about right now is kingdom building. It's about prepare ye the way. For the Lord of glory. Because he's coming back again. Yes. Yes. And each and every one of us. Uh -huh. Not only have we been given the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that each and every one of us. Right. Have been given gifts. Yes. For the Holy yeah. Spirit to use as he will. Right. For the upbuilding of the church. Yes. And he really is talking about the people. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking about the building. That's right. I Okay? okay? So that's what we're dealing with. I love church. I promise you I do. And we can hang out and have all the church we want to have. But we're going to have to do some kingdom building. We're going to have to connect with that gift that God put in us. We're going to have to ask God, well, God, what is this for? How do I use it? And how do you want to operate it in me? Because, see, that's what apostles do. They, that's one of the things they do. They stir up the gifts. They say, come forth in the name of Jesus. And they're, and they're what apostles do. So I'm just trying to let you know what God is doing in this house this night. If you up in here, it's because before you were even a twinkle in somebody's eye, you were in the heart of God. And tonight is a divine appointment for you. It's time to stop hiding. It's time to stop running. It's time to stop fighting it. It's time to come on in. And do what it is that you need to do. Because just like you need for me to do what God sent me to do, I need for you to do what God sent you to do. Right. You got my stuff. Uh -huh. And you need to come on and give it to me. Right. Especially because I'm up here in here giving you yours. Right. I want my stuff. Right. For each and every right. one of you. Right. I want my stuff. Whatever God sent to humanity, and to the earth realm that you got in your belly for me, I want it. And I will pull on you. Amen. I so will. Amen. We have to stop being ashamed of the fire. Then, <clears throat> I want you to remember this. Even in the fire, out of the fire, whatever. I want you to remember this thing right here. Do not let the devil fool you into shame and guilt. Don't do that. We run around and we scared somebody saw. And we, what, what you take that property? We try to go out of the area so nobody won't see us. <laughs> if you got something to be ashamed of, take it to the Lord. Don't run from it. Run to it. If you are guilty of something, don't run from him, run to him. He the only one can not help you. And you're, oh no, you're going to stay out there like he don't already know what you did. 
And you're going to stand there and let the devil just beat up on you. Every time you turn around, you wake up in the morning. The devil, you know what you did last night. <laughs> you don't think nobody around here saw you, did you? Uh, amen. You ain't the only somebody who go way to way across Georgia or wherever. <laughs> you ain't the only somebody who do that. Yeah. Oh, he'll torment you now. You know what you said to that woman you come up in here talking about. You hold it for the Lord. <laughs> and you know you didn't have no business taking that paper from off your job. He will torment you with it. Won't he torment you with it? He'll torment you with it. That's how come I tell on myself. Uh-uh. Because it is a slap in Jesus' face for you to walk around in shame and guilt. Yes. He bled and died for that. Mm, all right. To make sure that we don't have to be ashamed and we don't have to be guilty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. All right. So just take it to him. I don't do shame and guilt. Right. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I got something to be ashamed of. Lord, mm -hmm. it's me again. <laughs> yes, Lord, I'm going to tell you straight up. I knew I didn't have no business doing it before I did it. Mm -hmm. And I purposed in my heart, God. Knowing that you and me was going to have to have this conversation. But I purposed in my heart that I was going to do it. And I did it. But, but where I'm going to go? <laughs> you can't leave me out here in the cold with the devil. Right. You know my name is on every hit list in hell. <laughs> you can't leave me out here, Lord. Right. Just go to your Savior. That's it. Amen. Just go to your Savior. Yeah. And let him give you what you need. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this uh, back in uh, 19, 1989, 1990. I was homeless for 13 months. And I wasn't homeless because I did anything wrong. Mm 